Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell, the global leader in regenerative cell therapies. All right, so today my lab team wheeled this whiteboard in here and said, hey, can we store this in here? We don't need it anymore. And I was like, yeah, sure, but I can't promise you that I'm not gonna use it. So here we go. Today we're gonna to talk about DNA. Do the stem cells that are given to you in a stem cell therapy become part of your DNA or not? Our providers get asked that question every day, okay? Because people want to know, and they should know, because it's important. You're making a big healthcare decision to have a stem cell therapy, and you need to know what is going to be the result, right? Well, there's two types of stem cell therapy around the world, um, and they all involve exogenous stem cells. Either your stem cells are taken out of your body, processed, and then put back, right? Or it's from a donor. All right, so if it's your own, it's called autologous. If it's from a donor, it's called allogeneic, okay? And the donor usually comes from you know, birth tissue, like umbilical cord tissue or umbilical cord blood or amniotic fluid, so on and so forth. If it's autologous, there's really two main sources. One is uh, fat tissue, and the other would be from your bone marrow. And the biggest source of bone marrow in the body is in uh, the pelvis, the iliac crest, okay, the front or the back. Um, if you get your own autologous stem cells, either they're processed right away and put back in, or they go to a lab and get cultured and then put back into you, as long as they don't, no mistake is made, it's not an issue, right? Because your own DNA is going to be identical. So that we're taking off the board. Now, if it's the donor, it is a legitimate concern. There's been a lot of studies done over the last couple decades looking at this, and the answer is when you combine donor stem cells, and my drawing's terrible, just deal with it, all right, with your cells, what happens? Do you become a chimera? Do you end up with two sets of DNA? Well, it depends. If you were going to have um, a myeloablation, a treatment where it's like with chemotherapy, you knock out your immune system and then you use donor umbilical cord blood or a donor bone marrow, all right, it's not your DNA, but it's someone close to you, the answer is yes, you will end up with a second set of DNA. So throughout life, you'll then be a chimera. But we're not doing that. We're not knocking out your immune system. We're working with people who already have an immune system. It might be weakened, it might be competent, but at the end of the day, it is still an immune system. You do not become a chimera. The DNA that, uh, from the stem cells that are administered does not engraft, all right? Um, engraft is spelled E-N-G-R-A-F-T. It doesn't happen, okay? There's no evidence to suggest that any engraftment occurs. So if that's the case, and the stem cells from the donor are not becoming part of your DNA, how are they working? How are they doing what they do, right? Because a lot of people think that the stem cells that they're getting are the ones that are going to become a specialty cell in their body, right? So. For instance, you get these donor stem cells injected into the knee, okay? People tend to think that those are the ones that are going to become their cartilage cell. Oh, I spell cartilage wrong. Oh, Jeez. Cartilage cell. But that's not what happens, all right? So what does happen? Depends. If you were going to have um, a myeloablation, a treatment where it's like with chemotherapy, you knock out your immune system and then you use donor umbilical cord blood or a donor bone marrow, all right? It's not your DNA, but it's someone close to you. The answer is yes, you will end up with a second set of DNA. So throughout life, you'll then be a chimera. But we're not doing that. We're not knocking out your immune system. We're working with people who already have an immune system. It might be weakened, it might be competent, but at the end of the day, it is still an immune system. You 
do not become a chimera. The DNA that, uh, from the stem cells that are administered does not engraft, all right? Um, engraft is spelled E-N-G-R-A-F-T. It doesn't happen, okay? There's no evidence to suggest that any engraftment occurs. So if that's the case and the stem cells from the donor are not becoming part of your DNA, how are they working? How are they doing what they do, right? Because a lot of people think that the stem cells that they're getting are the ones that are going to become a specialty cell in their body, right? So, for instance, you get these donor stem cells injected into the knee, okay? People tend to think that those are the ones that are gonna become their cartilage cell. No, I spelled cartilage wrong, jeez. Cartilage cell. But that's not what happens, all right? So what does happen? Well, scientists have figured out that the main way that these donor stem cells work in your body is through what's called paracrine signaling. And that's basically a fancy word that predominantly means cell-to-cell -cell communication. Cell-to-cell -cell communication. So it will amp up your repair processes through things like angiogenesis, I'm going to abbreviate it, means new blood flow, okay, cellular proliferation, okay, this is going to be a mouthful, anti-apoptosis, and basically apoptosis is when you have cells in your body and they have a pre-programmed date of death. All right, they're going to live for so many days and then they die. They might still be completely functional, doing their job, right? The stem cells from the donor can stop that and help your existing cells live longer, okay? So you have angiogenesis, you have cellular proliferation, anti-apoptosis, you have reduction of inflammation, you have modulation of the immune system. You have reduction of oxidative stress. And, and there's a, a continual list of uh, things we know that they do. Now one of the things when it comes to cellular proliferation, you know, think about it. Um, you have a stroke, you need uh, new neural networks because part of your brain has basically died from anoxia, okay? That can help with creating new neurons, new astrocytes, new glial cells. So, you know, then you can look at other areas of the body as well. Now, another thing that they do is they prevent scar tissue. They're anti-fibrosis. So here's an example. You have pulmonary fibrosis. It's continuing to create new scar tissue Stem cells, if they're nebulized or given IV, they will go to the lungs and they can prevent further fibrosis from happening. They can enhance cellular proliferation in other areas of your lungs, as an example, to help them function better. And then the list goes on, okay? So that's what's happening. You're not gonna become a chimera, once again, just to put that to bed, <laughs> all right? So if you or a loved one is considering a stem cell therapy, Please look us up online. I mean, I have the marker, I may as well use it, right? R3stemcell.com, okay? We give free consultations all over the world. We're in six countries. We've done 24,000 stem cell procedures in the last 10 years. No one else even comes close to that. Give us a call to set up your free consultation. Plus one for the United States, 844 get step. We'll be happy to set you up with a free consultation. Thanks for watching.